online service. You are so welcome. I think we're in about week 75 of lockdown now. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, it definitely does. But it's still such a privilege to be able to meet virtually as a community and uh, glorify and praise God. So yeah, what a privilege to be here. It really Good, is. Good, clean family fun on a Sunday morning. <laughs> what could be better? Um, yeah, um, and a special welcome to you as well if you are new, if you're trying out church for the first time. It is such a privilege to have you with us. Um, I'm sorry that we can't be meeting in person to ply you with coffee and small talk, but hopefully one day soon uh, this will all be over and we'll get to meet you in person. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, my name's Greg. My name's Anna. Um, we've been going to Philly for about five or six years now um, and we decided to stay in Sheffield after we studied here um, because we love it so much. Um, we've been leading the students for the past six weeks or so now since Josh has been on furlough and we've absolutely loved it, haven't we? Yeah, it has been such a privilege to be able to see the way that God is moving yeah. uh, in the lives of the students, uh, but also their friends um, and non-Christian friends and family members and stuff. It's mm. been really cool, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about that later on as well. So, it wouldn't be church without notices. Um, and my prompt screen has just gone off. It's just come back on now. And first notice, um, so for those of you who would usually give um, through the donation baskets at church and obviously can't do that at the moment, uh, if you would still like to give, um, there is a link on the front page of the website uh, which will help you to do so. Also, uh, we've loved hearing all of your stories about the way that God is moving in your lives and the lives of those around you. Mm. Uh, if you have a story uh, which you would like to share um, about what God is doing in your life or someone's life that you know, no matter how big or small, we would love to hear it. Yeah. So if you have a story to share, um, please email Mike Rutter at ncsheffield.org. Hopefully it'll come up on the screen here for you. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. I got the notices You've done. Got the Boom. Done. Speaking of testimonies, um, one of our students recently organised a 24 hour prayer session over a weekend and it was amazing. We had loads of our students sign up. Um, we did an hour's slot each. Some of our, our student families that help and serve the students joined in too and it was just amazing to see how God moved in that time and we had many people sending in prayer requests and it was just really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, we've noticed a real openness to the gospel in mm. this time. Uh, and there's so many amazing stories uh, from this 24 hour prayer session. Uh, but we have just picked a couple of guys to share some stories about how God moved through this 24 hour prayer session. So over to you guys. Hi church family, I'm Hannah, I'm one of the students at St Thomas Philadelphia and a couple of weeks ago as a student family we decided to do a 24 hour prayer session where each of us or a couple of us took an hour of those 24 hours and prayed for either prayer requests that we had come through from friends and family or just for the situation that we're in at the moment as a country and as the world. Um, and it was amazing, I got 12 prayer requests back from social media and half of those were from people who I know aren't Christians and it was amazing to be able to intercede for these people and pray for them and let them know that God loves them. And one of my favourite prayer requests was from one of my friends who is um, a graduate of a theatre company and he asked for prayer for the theatre and arts communities in the world so that when people go back to um, living normal life they're not scared to go to see shows or go to see exhibitions and I just thought it was an amazing thing that I hadn't even thought about to pray for. Um, yeah, God was so great and um, it was just amazing to pray together as a family in that time. Hey everyone, um, so my encouraging story from the 24-7 prayer was a friend of mine who reached out to me uh, on my 20, uh, on my prayer request uh, post that I put on Facebook um, asking for a prayer for him and his family. Um, and that basically turned into a spontaneous catch-up on FaceTime, uh, having not spoken in longer than a year. And... Yeah, amongst other things and chatting about what we've been up to since we've seen each other, one of the things was my new coming of faith um, and my baptism. Um, and he was he was listening to my story and what I had to say about it um, and how it's changed me as a person since. 
Um, and he was, he was very interested, very just listening attentively, asking questions, um, and to the point where he felt like his perspective on faith changed just from that conversation. Um, and, yeah, he was so encouraged that he thought, you know, he was encouraged to, to take his first steps into trying faith. And, and, and um, I pointed him in the right direction and starting with the gospel, uh, downloading the Bible app and, and taking it from there. So, yeah, an amazing story uh, of how God responded from, you know, what was a simple Facebook post. Um, so, yeah, incredible, really. Thanks, guys. It is great to hear your stories of all the amazing things that God is still doing in this time. Now, Anna, I believe that you have a few friends who are watching, don't you? That I do. Yeah. So who do you know who's watching today? I know that Caleb and Tabitha are watching this morning. Also, Micah and Isabel and her baby sister, Clara, Nathan and Lily as well. Everybody. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, now... We're really missing our friends, aren't we, at yeah. the moment? Yeah, we are. We're really missing playing with them, uh, missing being able to give them a big hug. Mm. Uh, we know why we can't see our friends at the moment, but it's still sometimes a little bit upsetting, isn't it? It is, yeah. And maybe even a little bit scary sometimes. Yeah, I get scared sometimes. Yeah, but we don't need to worry because we have a huge, ginormous God huge. who is so much bigger than everything that is going on at the moment sure is now anna do you know maybe a song that we could sing that just explains how big and how amazing our god is i think i do perfect well i tell you what why don't you read us a psalm and then we can sing this incredible song about how wonderful and how big our god is yes i will i'll do that so Psalm 145 says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Yeah, thank you, God, that you are so big and so worthy of our praise and you are our King. We, yeah, we long to worship you this morning. Let's now, do it. Kids, everyone from zero to 90. If you're 91, fair enough, stay seated. <laughs> but everyone on your feet, we know you know the song and join in. Our God is a great big God. Andy Halter's in his end.
Thank you, God, that we get to meet with you and we get to worship you wherever we are. I just pray that you will continue to meet with us in our homes through the rest of the service and that you will continue to minister to us through the spirit. Amen. We're now going to go into a time of intercession. But before we do that, if you would like to join in with the communion today that Mike's going to do after his talk, then now's the time to go and get your bread and wine or whatever you have, biscuits, orange juice. Um, yeah, so if you want to do that, please go and do that now. Firstly, we would like to pray for those in our city and in our nation who need God's healing power right now. As a church, we're called to pray for healing through Jesus. And right now, our city, our nation and the world need it more than ever. Many are suffering from the coronavirus, but there's also many more suffering with other health conditions due to the due to not being able to get the treatment at this time due to the pandemic. Maybe some of those people, are your family members or those that you know who are close to you. Let's pray together now for God's healing power through the Holy Spirit to move through our city, our nation and the world. God, thank you for your spirit that heals and gives us life. We lift up each of our prayers to you now and ask that you would move in your mighty power. Amen. Amen. Now we would like to pray for our leaders at this incredibly challenging time. We pray for wisdom in their decision making. We pray for energy, strength and supernatural peace over their minds at this stressful time. We pray that God, God's will will be done through them and in our country.
Thank you, Lord, for our leaders. We pray for your wisdom to flow through them, strength and endurance for these times ahead and peace over their bodies and mind. In your name we pray. Amen. Finally, let's pray for our neighbours and our communities that we would continue to look out for one another. That the foundations that many of us are building at this time with those who live on our streets and in our communities will strengthen and that we will be able to share Jesus's hope and peace in what is a stressful time with a lot of unknowns. Let's pray. God, thank you for how you love community. And when we come together in your name, you are there. We pray that we will continue to connect with our neighbours and our community at this time, that we will be able to share your hope and peace to all who we are in contact with, both at a distance and through technology. Amen. Amen. So Mike is going to be speaking to us now as we continue our series through Ephesians. So let's pray for Mike uh, before he speaks to us. Father God, we thank you for Mike and the preparation he's put into this talk for today. We ask now that you would fill him anew with your spirit, that as he speaks to us, his words will be your words. We pray your peace and affirmation over him now. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to you. We're going to uh, get straight on with our series on Ephesians. Morning, guys. Um, I've got my resident um, Greek scholar with me this morning. I thought I'd make use of him um, because, we're, we're, as I say, we're carrying on with our series on Ephesians. And this morning, particularly, we're looking at the armour of God and the breastplate of righteousness. So I thought it'd be great to understand what this word righteous means, because I think in our world today, often this word is used in a negative sense. So it's important we understand what it means um, from the Bible, from what Paul was talking about when he's talking about the breastplate of righteousness. So, Joel, what does, well, what's the Greek word for righteous, first of all? Well, in the New Testament, the word used most commonly, the um, adjective would be dikaios, or the noun from that would be dikaiosune. There you go. Mm. Um, <laughs> and what does, what do, does, more importantly, what does the word mean, do you think? Uh, what, what do we mean by righteousness? Yeah, well, the word dikaios carries a lot of um, ideas of being right with God, and it's used a lot in the New Testament as kind of a gift from God, those who God have made right. And it connotes a lot of ideas with justice, those who God has um, justified as a free gift given by him. Great. Well, thank you. That's really interesting. All right, you can go now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start by reading from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, which just provides us the context uh, within which to understand what we're going to be talking about this morning. So from verse 10, it says... Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we're reminded that our situation as followers of Jesus Ultimately, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against spiritual powers that are seeking to stop us from being able to step into all that we have as followers of Jesus. The inheritance we have as followers of Jesus, the authority that we have as followers of Jesus and the identity that we have as his followers. The enemy is seeking to stop us stepping in to that. 
And this is why Paul is helping us to see how we can defend against the attacks that the enemy has against us. Now, why does he want to stop us doing this? Well, if we fully realize as followers of Jesus what we carry, the inheritance that we have, then we become very dangerous people in the kingdom of God, very dangerous people, very powerful people um, to, to carry the things of the kingdom into this world. So it's in his interest to stop us being able to step in to that inheritance. If you never discover what you are as a follower of Jesus, then you'll never discover what you carry. And you'll never be able to release this authentic hope into the lives of others, or you'll be limited in your ability to do that. So learning to stand firm in who we are in Jesus is really, really important, which is why um, this series and what we're looking at is key for us in our discipleship. So Paul says to withstand these attacks, put on armour. And he's probably using the illustration of armour because he's under house, he's under arrest, he's in prison, he's, um, he's probably got soldiers around him all the time in his life and there in front of him is this visual illustration of soldiers wearing armour and it'll remind him um, of, of this illustration that he's then using to help us to understand the armour that we put on or can put on that is our inheritance that will help us to live our lives well as followers of Jesus. So in verse 13, he goes on to say, therefore, put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, he says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Peter talked to us about that uh, last week and he then goes on to say with the breastplate of righteousness in place and that's what we're looking at this morning the breastplate of righteousness and as uh, as we look at this it's important that we take on board what this word righteousness means in this context it means right standing it means having right standing with God it means being presentable to him or being approved by him. So it's, it's about putting on something that enables us to be presented to God well, to have right standing with him. This is really important because one of the key conditions, if not the key conditions of the human heart, of yours and my hearts, is this need to be approved, this need to find um, our identity, this sense of, of worth, if you like, um, that we have value. And the breastplate of righteousness speaks right into that need, into that need for a sense of identity, of having worth. I mean, if you remember when you're young, I, I, I'm, I'm so glad now that I'm past this stage of life, but when you're younger, um, being accepted and fitting in is so important, isn't it? And you'll go to all lengths to do it. You'll you'll wear the strangest of clothes or you'll, you'll listen to certain music if it means that you get in with a crowd that like that music. You will do things in order to gain approval. You'll do things in order to be able to fit in, to have a sense of identity in your life. And one of the good things about getting older is that those things hopefully become less important to you and you realise there are other things, better things, that give you your sense of worth. And, and even, even in our relationships that we have, uh, the friendships that we have, uh, the work that we do, the things that we do in life, we're, we're, we're often seeking a sense of approval, a sense of identity, um, a sense of worth from these things that we do. And in themselves, these things aren't bad things. We do get a sense of who we are from, from these people, the, these relationships we have and these things that we do. But... If they are the sole way that we get our sense of identity, then we will often, will often be let down by them. And, and, and at their worst, we will, will be hurt and we will suffer pain. And uh, 
It's particularly in our hearts that the breastplate of righteousness protects us. And where we have sought our identity and our sense of worth in places that aren't in God, then we open up ourselves to the vulnerability of pain and hurts in our hearts. And many of us through our lives will know that experience. God is the only one who can give us the approval that we really need, who can give us that sense of identity that we really need. He made us. He's the one who truly knows us. He knows you and he knows me. And he longs to draw you and me to himself so that he can say, you are loved. You are right with me. He's done everything possible to make that possible. He's done everything in his power to make it possible for us to be right with him. For us, if you like, to take this breastplate of righteousness and put it on and to be right with him and to meet this deep need within each one of us for a sense of identity and a sense of worth and a sense of belonging. If we learn to wear this breastplate then it protects us and in particular it protects our hearts from the pain that we can we can have from seeking approval and worth in other areas in other places sometimes our own attempts of seeking this approval it's a bit like uh, putting on our own cardboard armor our own cardboard breastplate, if you like, made of, you know, like when you were uh, at school or you, you're, you're getting your kids ready for World Book Day or something and you make a little uh, outfit for them and, uh, and you make a little soldier outfit maybe for, for one of them and, and you make it out of cardboard plates or something like that. Um, it's, it's, it, it's a bit like that when we're seeking approval and uh, a sense of worth in other places than God. It's like putting on flimsy armour that really when the attacks of um, the enemy, the attacks that go right to the heart of who we are, of you're not worth anything or, or, or who you are doesn't matter or you aren't someone who is loved, those kind of feelings that all of us can have at times, then the armour that we put on isn't going to withstand, isn't going to defend us against those attacks. It's flimsy and it doesn't protect our hearts. The breastplate of right standing, of righteousness with God, of knowing we are approved by God, it changes how we are able to navigate life. And as we receive this gift, we live in a place of protection from the enemy. He doesn't want you to pick up this armour because he knows how strong it will make you. If you like, it's the ultimate spiritual PPE that enables us, you and me, as followers of Jesus, to stand firm and to go into places of darkness and be people who carry hope and who point people to the one who can truly tell them who they are, who can truly give them their worth and their sense of identity. I want you to watch this short video of a boy called Grayson. Um, I've shown this before in the past, so some of you have seen it before, but I think it's so good at, um, at illustrating this sense of getting our approval from God. Um, this boy Grayson, he, he was born without being able to hear and this video is shot straight after he has had some implants put in and they're switched on and his dad is speaking into, to him and telling him that he loves him and he hears, if you like, he hears for the first time the approval of his father. So just watch this video. In a normal voice, not too loud. Um, he may want to whip it off again. I wouldn't be surprised if his first response was whoa, because this is going to be much more complex sound than what he's been listening to. It's on now. Hi, Grayson. Talk to him, Dad. 
everybody. Daddy loves you. Daddy <laughs> loves you. <laughs> Daddy. Yes, here. Can you hear Daddy? Get in his, get in his face. Daddy loves you. When we start to get our approval from our Heavenly Father, we get a breastplate that is strong, that protects our hearts, and we don't need to look anywhere else for our right standing, for our sense of worth. What he says about you is what you hear, and that's what really matters. And this approval, this right standing with him, this breastplate, it's nothing that we deserve. It's a gift to you and me. All we choose to do is to receive it. To pick it up, if you like, and to put it on. It's not our job to be righteous, as if we could. That's what religion tries to do. As the hymn goes, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. As a family, we have recently watched the film Les Mis. And um, I know for, for many people, musicals are one of those love or hate things, those Marmite moments. Um, I happen to love musicals and uh, I think Les Mis is amazing because really, actually, it's the story of the gospel, isn't it, Les Mis? If you don't know it, it's the story of a man called Jean Valjean and um, he's badly treated by the law and he finds himself in a place where he is stealing from a priest who has put him up for the night. And um, he's caught by the police the next day with all the things that he's stolen from the priest. And he's brought before this priest. But instead of the priest looking at him and seeing his shame, he sees God in him. Or he sees him as God sees him. And the priest offers Jean Valjean mercy. And in doing this, Jean Valjean himself starts to see himself the way God sees him. And he learns to receive the gift of right standing with God. The tagline for him in the film is, freedom is mine. That's the tagline for any follower of Jesus. Freedom is mine. On the other hand, Javert, the police officer who spends his life trying to hunt down Jean Valjean, his sense of worth, of right standing in life, is about keeping the law. And he can't stand the idea of Jean Valjean being shown mercy. But it is Javert who gets imprisoned by the need to find approval in what he does. And it's Jean Valjean who, when shown mercy, when given right standing as a free gift, finds freedom within that place to become a better person. So how do we do this? How do we put on this breastplate? breastplate? What does it mean to do that? It's important to remember, like we said at the beginning, the enemy wants nothing more than to stop us knowing about this piece of armour that we have. If you like, it's, imagine you're in this, this, this army you're, and, and you're in this great army and ahead of you, in front of you, is the enemy that you're going to fight. But you're standing there in, in flimsy clothes, in a, in a t-shirt, uh, and, and there's no armour. And the enemy across from you is getting ready their bows and arrows, and they're getting ready to fire their arrows at you. You aren't protected at all from those arrows. But right next to you, just behind you, is this container that's full of this most amazing armour, these breastplates, that if you knew they were there, and if you put them on, they would protect you from those arrows that are coming towards you. Your enemy is not going to want you to know about that container that is just there with those breastplates and he will do all he can to stop you knowing about that and the key way that he will do that is to draw attention to your flaws, to my flaws, to the things that we know all too well that aren't right about ourselves and he will draw attention to those and get us to focus on those things because that distracts you from the armour that is yours to put on as an inheritance. 
And it's things like, uh, you're no good at reading the Bible, or you're no good at praying, or that thing that you've done, you'll never be, um, you'll never be forgiven for that, or wh wh whatever it is. We, we know too well the things that we, we, we know are hard about ourselves. And we try to change them in our world. We try to focus on these things. We try to repent, if you like, to turn around from these, these things. Uh, and sometimes we seek ways of medicating the sense of shame that we have for these flaws within ourselves. And as long as the enemy can keep us focused on those things, we are distracted from the armour that we're able to put on. But all the while, all the time, all we need to do is see that next to us is this wonderful piece of armour. And what we really need to do is repent of not accepting the free gift that God has given us. This breastplate of righteousness, of right standing with him. So how do we do this? Well, the first job is not to be distracted by the things that we see wrong, our flaws, our sins, and try to deal with them first. Instead, come before God each day and put on the gift of mercy of right standing with him and we do this i think primarily by declaring the truths about god and about ourselves over ourselves each day by meditating on the truths of him and of who we are each day that we find in scripture it's truths that tell us we are forgiven that everything has been done by jesus on the cross to make us right with God the truth that you and I are loved no matter what the truth that we are made presentable to God by the blood of Jesus he loves us so the repenting we do is from not putting on this gift it's not focusing on the smaller the, the smaller things those flaws because as we do that, as we repent of not receiving this gift, and repent just means changing our mind, changing our way of thinking, we find that place of acceptance with God. We find that place of being right with him, of right standing, of approval with him. And in that place, we have the freedom to invite the Holy Spirit to bring transformation to our lives and to deal with those other things that the Holy Spirit will do in his own time. We learn to submit to this because we know that it has nothing to do with being accepted by God and everything to do with being loved by him. And that renders the attack of the enemy ineffective. As the worship song says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name the devil tries to make us focus on our flaws and says you have no right to come into the presence of God the Holy Spirit says to us Yes, there are flaws. Yes, there is sin. So draw close to him. Put on his righteousness. And in that place of approval, let him bring transformation. You see, it's not an ignoring of our need to have transformation in our lives. It's not this half gospel that seems so prevalent in, in, in many places these days. This, this gospel that says you are loved, you are accepted, God loves you as you are, which is absolutely true. But he also loves us so much that he doesn't leave us in that place. He loves us so much as he accepts us and welcomes us in to then begin the work of transformation in our lives, to help us to become all that he created us to be. And as I said earlier, as people who know who they are, who have this breastplate of righteousness, this sense of right standing with God, this armour that we wear, it makes us powerful as followers of Jesus. Because we, 
we be, we're not distracted anymore by the attacks of the enemy who is trying to have a go at our sense of worth, at our sense of right standing. We know that our righteousness comes from Jesus. We know that it's a free gift that is given to us. But we know that we are accepted and loved and we have a place at the Father's table because of it. And as we learn to put this piece of armour on, we become powerful people for the kingdom of God. And we are able to go into the world and be light bearers and hope bearers to the world and show other people the love of the Father who wants to draw them to himself and wants them to be offered this free gift of righteousness that they can put on themselves. So it's really good now that we're going to be able to share communion together. Uh, this, this has been the practice of the church right from the beginning, the remembering of this gift of righteousness that was won for us by the death of Jesus on the cross, that his blood, his body broken for us, enables you and I to have right standing with God. What an amazing free gift. So we're going to pause for a moment just to prepare our hearts to receive uh, communion together. Uh, if you haven't managed to be able to get your uh, bread and wine yet, now's the time, or, or juice, whatever you're using, now's the time to do it. But let's just pause for a moment and prepare our hearts before God. So Father, we thank you for your word again. We thank you for the gift of righteousness that you freely give to us this amazing grace that you show to us so now lord we ask holy spirit would you seal in our hearts the truth of what we've been thinking about this morning amen we praise you father lord of all creation in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. And you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. So on the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, Jesus took bread and he gave you thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and he said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Lord, as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, would you send your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon this bread, this wine, this juice, and may it be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, would you make us one in Christ? our risen Lord. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body because we share in the one bread. So wherever you are, whether you're with others or whether you're on your own at the moment, Let's share together in the bread and the wine or the juice, whatever it is that you have, because though we may be scattered, we are one in him. We are his church. We are his body in him. So let's share in this uh, communion together as his church.
Thank you so much, Mike. Hasn't this morning been amazing? It has, I've loved it. We love that we can meet together as family, virtually in our homes. We're so grateful to God that we can do this. If anyone is visited today and you'd like to get to know us, or you just want to hear a bit more about Jesus, then please email welcome at ncsheffield.org. For King Centre, uh, people will be meeting up in their missional communities uh, for a coffee and a catch up after the service via Zoom. And anyone else, um, there is an opportunity for you to join a Zoom chat and have a catch up over coffee as well after the service. The link will appear on the chat feed on YouTube or if you want to access it on the website, you can click the link on the online services page. So I'm just going to pray for us as we draw our service to a close this morning. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can still meet together like this. I thank you that our identity is defined by you and your victory on the cross and that nothing we or anyone else does can change the way you see us. Mm. Help us to remember that our righteousness comes from belief in Jesus Christ and is a weapon from you that frees us from seeking identity elsewhere. I pray that you will help us to walk out the victory you have already won for us and help us to submit to your discipline as you continue to mould us into the likeness of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming, guys. Uh, we miss you all and cannot wait to see you hopefully soon. Yeah. But until then, we'll see you next week. Bye. Now that church has gone online, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure that you don't miss any videos coming up in the week. We might have some cool stuff coming out for you. So make sure to click subscribe down below and stay in touch. Bye.